Right, Cassie. Pumpkins, squashes, courgettes. Let's open it up to marrows as well, because they take me right back to being a kid. <laughs> All right. So my first job growing for Tidy Nan and Granddad, I was in charge of the marrow heap. Okay. All right. And that was definitely one of those vegetables that my nan took every single drop of flavour out of. <laughs> you might as well have mashed them up. And actually, over the years, it's interesting, when I was a kid, it was only ever marrow. I don't think see squashes and pumpkins and things mm. like that were about, but it was never anything that I ate. It was all about the marrow. Yeah. You know? So that's been fine-tuned. Us <laughs> as gardeners grow so much more. But how good for you is that group of plants yeah i mean they're packed with vitamins and minerals they contain contain beta carotene which is good for eye health and immunity so all vegetables out there you know they are a complex mix of different vitamins and minerals but yeah, yeah really good for you yeah they're, they're good and what about you when did you uh, was it when you got into cooking was it something as a kid with mum grew cook or yeah oh so I definitely remember a few marrows knocking around and similar to you they'd be overcooked I remember them being really watery and flavourless <laughs> and not something that I wanted on the plate at all no. so I wasn't really a fan when I was younger to be honest but I've definitely changed my mind as I've grown older yeah, yeah they're the sort of th the cooked green of a marrow was not even a very nice green, was no, it? No, it really <laughs> wasn't. And I think back then as well, my mum and dad didn't use much in the way of spices in their cooking. So nowadays, if I'm cooking marrow, I'll, it doesn't have loads of flavour, does it? So I'll bring some nice spices into the dish and that really elevates it. But back then, it was just boiled or roasted and yeah. it wasn't very appetising. No, whereas now, you think squash available, pump, and even pumpkins seem to have really appeared on the scene in the last five ten years and SI wasn't really paying attention but now if it comes up to towards the 31st of October yeah you get out in the countryside pick your own pumpkin oh and it's everywhere yeah listen this is a big thing for for my kids around that time is of it? year when it, you know Halloween's knocking on the door pumpkin patches pumpkins everywhere it's a big deal isn't it and you, yeah. even in the supermarkets you see so many different varieties now and i think people use them as an ornament around the home and then hopefully they're eating them as well as using them as an ornament because i hate to think that there's so <laughs> yeah. many going to waste exactly you talk about ornaments right in the horticulture world growing big pumpkins mm. is a big deal all right so yeah. i've got a mate who has held the world record for the biggest pumpkin all right so wow. he grew the biggest pumpkin he then carved the inside out all the mush as yeah. to call it all the seeds and bits and pieces and made it into a boat wow <laughs> and then took it on a lake <gasps> No way. Actually, seriously, I'm not waking no you up. Way. He took it on a lake and literally paddles his way across wow. the lake. Wow. Oh, my God. I, yeah. think, I, think I need to see some evidence of this, <laughs> exactly. I think. Exactly. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> I am. So when it comes to growing them, have you grown any of those bits and pieces at all? I've grown lots of courgettes. I think yeah. that's the one thing lots of people grow, isn't it? And they come with the bonus of having the flowers as well which I love to stuff and deep fry or cook in lots of different ways but I like to grow courgettes green ones yellow ones they look gorgeous you get loads they're really easy to grow so that's the one thing from this group that I have grown quite yeah. a few of but I've never delved into the pumpkins or the squashes no. or anything else and I think probably if you were new to gardening the courgettes the place mm. to start and they're probably one vegetable because they do so well in most people's gardens so you end up with one of those spiralers and yeah. knows what else just to deal with the courgettes but actually i think you could do a whole book on how to make a courgette it's probably edible to children as well i with mine i used to have to i'd literally cut them in half and then i'd take the seeds out mm. and then I'd actually chop all that mix up and then I'd mix that back up with breadcrumbs and, and a cheesy sauce and mm. then I'd put it back in nice 
and disguise them. Yeah. And then they eat them. Yeah. You know? but, See, I um, struggle with my kids. I'm not there yet with the courgettes. I'm going to keep persevering. I have to cut, chop them up quite small yeah, yeah, and mix yeah. them into something at the moment to get them to eat them. But the chunks are going to get bigger. <laughs> and exactly. they're going to have to get used to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you could end up with a Mrs. Frost who still doesn't like them. You know, I still have to disguise them from her. Darling, uh, yeah. just eat it. I'm getting the kids to eat it. So please eat it. But like it's, so many things, I think you maybe just haven't tried it in the right way yeah, yet. You know, courgettes yeah. can be quite bland and watery like the marrow, but if you have really good courgette fries, they're yeah, super yeah. crispy and delicious, or like you say, in some kind of cheesy gratin baked in the oven, so good. How could you not like that? No, you're right, you're right. And actually the flowers, I, I say, I always look at the flowers and think, yeah, I'd love to do something cool mm. with those. And you said about stuffing them, and it's the obvious thing to stuff them a bit cheesy base like I've do with colouring the stuff or what else would you stuff them yeah, with? Yeah, so I like to stuff them with a ricotta mix. So ricotta, mint, chilli, a bit Ooh. of parmesan as well. Pop that into a piping bag and fill yeah. them up and twist them closed, dip them in like a tempura yeah, kind of yeah, batter yeah, yeah, and yeah, deep yeah. fry them and drizzle with honey as well You're at the end. It again. <laughs> I can't help <laughs> it. Like... I can't help it. That is just one of the highlights of the year for me they are so delicious cooked like that i absolutely love them yeah they are there's mm. something um i think as well you know that with that it's it's the sweetness as well of the flower mm. you realize that there's a lot more going on than just you know the basic courgette so when it comes to growing them to be fair they're they are if i look at that as a group if we start with the courgettes um i've grown them quite happily in the garden again they're another one that i've put in the border sometimes when i've been even creating gardens for other people the first couple of years when we're filling voids i'll use scrambling plants like that mm. in borders just to get people going okay and, and yeah you could grow something like that in yeah. an ornamental kitchen garden in the ornamental garden containers good size containers mm. and the only thing you find is i tend to grow them in a good size container but a, a sort of a wider flatter container mm -hmm. on the basis that they tend to go scrawling all over the yeah. place and and if it's got to come a long way off the pot sometimes the top of that plant becomes a little bit vulnerable so the lower they are to the ground the better in fact actually, when i moved back into the house i was in i grew squash in the first year in, in one of the beds and i went away for a couple of weeks i come back and the squash had gone up the hedge and out onto the main road wow. <laughs> literally yeah and this sort of i'll try and pass it in that's a squash growing out of my but it was starting to fruit so actually I had to go out on the pavement and throw the squash back <laughs> over the edge but, uh, but yeah growing them as far as that's concerned containers veg garden as I said but what I tend to do is get seeds going probably about I would maybe April time late mm -hmm. March early April again it goes back to that thing of it's not fixed anymore yeah so if you've got somewhere you can do it uh, indoors if not then i would probably sow something like that outside probably in about may time mm -hmm. one of the good things about those plants is they will produce late onto the season i i've been known to be picking picking sort of squashes from the garden in november yeah going mm -hmm. and, and bits and pieces like that so i would sow those individually in pots probably about eight centimeter to a liter pot mm -hmm. and it's a little tiny little the seed in the middle so it's a tiny little flat seed a peat free compost i plant it probably a couple of centimeters into that pot cover it off and then go and they come up like weeds really mm, okay. i then would grow it on indoors and then i would start to get to a point where i harden it off and what i mean by that is if it's in the greenhouse or if it's in a conservatory as we start to get into late april early late may i'm just either opening the greenhouse up i'm teasing it in and out of the greenhouse so that i'm not shocking this plant and again it's one of those don't go too early because you've got them growing you've got them growing and, and, you, and you're keen to get going yeah. but if you put them into cold soil they'll just sit there like that they'll get a little bit mm. grumpy and also because of the way they grow it is quite up it's a hollow sort of more tubular type stem mm -hmm. so they can be a little bit rocky in the ground so all of us that you know you get them in early we have a few windy days or wet windy days big leaves they get battered mm. and of course you're just shocking the plant you know yeah. so and then really leave plenty of room i think that's the one thing as well you're putting out a plant that probably looks about the size of your hand but this thing 
is going to cover more than what we've got in front of us table wise and i think okay. sometimes when we talk about growing courgettes because you, you buy a packet and you've got 10 seeds in it i'm mm. going to grow 10 seeds yeah. <laughs> and you know and the problem is then you have got you've probably got 60 70 80 90 yeah. 100 or courgettes to mm. deal with through the season so for me that go easy so i plant one maybe two and then what i do is always make sure they're different varieties. Mm -hmm. Because again, you probably notice now when we go and buy courgettes, when I first started growing courgettes, it was all about the green thing. Yeah. The green long thing. Now, oh wow, you can get every single different courgette growing. And it goes back to variety Mm. and you grow your own. But that's growing it. Keep it watered. It'll work its way away and then you'll be picking courgette. It's yeah. that, it is that simple. Put a little bit of goodness into the ground. Anything else apart from that? I don't think so, really. It, it, they really are an easy one. I say that seed, one seed in a pot, because when it, you don't want to disturb the roots of that plant once mm. it gets going. Um, that's it, job done. So okay. now you can tell me how, because the <laughs> nation will be sat there going... We all in horticulture we laugh because we joke that courgettes are a thing that we're all absolutely rammed out with. Yeah, yeah. So tell me what we're going to do with a courgette. It's the same in the cook's kitchen actually. <laughs> On the Good Food website, there are certain touch points in the year when the search for certain things just you know skyrockets. One's blackberries, pancake day, and the other big one is courgettes. Yeah. So when it's courgette season, we know about it <laughs> yeah. because you know you get hundred times the results of people wanting recipes for courgettes and new ideas because I think after the first couple of meals with the courgettes coming out of your garden people quite quickly get bored of them and want something a bit more interesting. We've got hundreds of recipes on the website but a few of my favourite ways to cook them. I really like them in a pasta dish where you slowly cook courgettes in quite a lot of olive oil and garlic so they're almost collapsing and they become really soft and like jammy which isn't a way we eat courgettes very often but they are really delicious and silky and if you have that tossed through some spaghetti with some parmesan or pecorino that's delicious so simple all it needs is a bit of garlic really good olive oil and plenty of olive oil that's one of the key ingredients yeah, 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 yeah. and really delicious courgette curry is really good as well yeah. they work really well with spices just like we said with marrows you yeah, know you yeah, can take yeah. on a lot of spice because they are quite a bland vegetable so i really like them in a curry cook down and then if you want to preserve them you've got things like pickles and chutneys as well which they don't always have the nicest color do they when yeah, you preserve yeah, yeah, courgettes yeah, yeah. but they can carry flavors really well so you can make a really delicious chutney with coriander seeds and cumin yeah seeds nice. but turmeric in there make almost like a piccalilli type pickle yeah yeah and then you can enjoy it for months and months to come there's just so much you can do with courgettes isn't yeah, there so you're selling it girl <laughs> so selling. i hope so <laughs> you, you definitely <laughs> are i think as a hey, as as a veg grower if you're new to growing veg they've got to be a go-to because that, very rarely are you not successful with courgettes mm-hmm. you know? and, and actually interestingly we talk about having lots of them and, and not necessarily everybody liking them because they can you know, feel a little bit blander, but you've obviously brought out life. But actually sometimes I find that like maybe using a yellow courgette mm. or something like that, because people seem to, with their eyes, straight away, oh, it's green, it's courgette. Yeah. Whereas actually the, the yellow throws them a little bit. And it's easier for me to get my kids to work a yellow one okay. into a dish. Yeah. And without them really commenting. So whether they think that maybe it's a little bit more like a squash or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and like you touched on spiralizer earlier yeah, as well. Yeah, and that yeah, was yeah. like a huge trend a couple of years oh, ago to spiralize the courgettes, wasn't yeah. it? And um, with the yellow courgettes as well, they look yeah. quite a lot like spaghetti, don't yeah, they? So that's exactly. another really good way to eat them yeah. and actually hardly cook them at all because they're really, they're nice raw as well. If yeah. you really thinly slice them or spiralize them, toss them through a nice vinaigrette, they're delicious in a salad and I don't think we eat them very, raw very often no, I, I actually if I'm out gardening mm. and there's a young one kicking around I'd pick it up a bit like a cucumber just and just start munching on the and, yeah. and they're really tasty I've been known just to eat the flowers yeah. but they're really tasty yeah. like that just as a, a tiny little snack but nice. then you're taking it straight off the plant and yeah. it's 
that's a different experience mm-hmm. from buying one and then bringing it home and trying to gnaw on it. Yeah, you know? yeah. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so hopefully we've got a few people thinking, you know, I'll give the courgette a yeah, go. Yeah, I hope know? so. I know lots of people out there are always looking for ideas. There's lots of them to, to dive into. Yeah, cool. Mm. So squash. I think squash is a really cool vegetable. I agree. And... They're so varied in their varieties, yeah. aren't they? I tried spaghetti squash um, oh, for the first man. time last year and loved it. It's really interesting, such a different texture. And, and if you think about this as a plant, and when I talk, you know I rattle on about this idea of ornamentals and edibles coming together. Look at all the different squashes there are out there. Do yeah. a little bit of research. And like we said, we see fields of pumpkins now. If you leave some of these squashes in your garden... Mm for a little bit longer than you are actually you've got these little pieces of sculpture yeah they are absolutely incredible as far as growing it's the same sort of process really Mm -hmm. as the courgette all i would say is that i'm not always as successful with you know, so I work a lot of goodness into the soil. I make sure they've got a sort of a, a decent, sunny spot. Whereas I feel like sometimes I could forget about a courgette for a few days. I will always check on a, on the squash. Mm. Just make sure that it's it's a bit protected. This, that, the other. And I suppose that's the other thing I didn't say. Sometimes it, when I do first part put them out, I might just cover them a little bit just with fleece, just to mm-hmm. protect them, just till they get the roots in the ground and and get them going. But yeah, the growing thing is pretty much the same. So I think for me, this one is all about the cooking. <laughs> all about the I want to know first, what varieties do you grow? Because yeah. it's a similar story. In the shops, all you see kind of year round is the butternut squash, isn't it? And there's so many out there. So what are the other kind yeah. of varieties that so you would suggest looking for? there's one called Sweet Max, I think it was called, that mm. I did. Um, I did this year, but normally I, because there's so many of them, I try a different one each year. Okay. That's what I do. I don't tend to stick mm. with them. And it's the same with the courgettes. I, and I probably say, I'm a, I'm a gardener. It's, oh, that's new. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that before. Mm. Oh, wow. And that's the joy of it, though. Yeah. What's that going to look like? What's mm. it going to taste like? And uh, and they say you don't get that. So, yeah, Sweet Max, and they were really good. And mm. Sweet Max, exactly as it says on the tin. And I think that's one of the things that I like about squashes mm. is that they can taste incredibly sweet. Yes. Just roasted down. Mm. The texture I'd love, but just roasted them. I did a dish the other day, and ultimately, oh, I can't remember her name. I think she's done some writing for you. She has for the magazine as mm. well. But it like, does a lot of tin bake things. Okay. And you probably remember her name in, in a minute because I won't because I'm older the than Rock you Meanie. are. That's it. Yeah. This tray bake, all right, was sweet corn, which mm. I grow. And I'd had a few that were, I'd, I'd picked them because the weather was changing and I'd put them to one side and Coco the Clown if I forgot about them, <laughs> didn't I? So, and uh, being the idiot that I am. But they were still all right, but they'd lost that real freshness. Mm. So I, I had those. I had some squashes that I picked, put in the, I cut those up. I halved these sweet corns and then I had some black bean a um, t- couple of tins of black bean mm. put that in and then some cumin ground coriander and what else did I put in this definitely uh, I oiled it over and there's another herb that I can't think anyway put this in the oven for 45 minutes oh Wow. Sounds great. But also it looked amazing. Yeah. Oh, sweet chili. I put nice. like sweet chili flakes. Yeah. So it was quite Mex it looked Mexican okay. because the colour, yeah. the oranges and, and then it was done under a hot heat, so it was mm-hmm. two hundred odd degrees. And they charred a little bit. Yeah, nice. And, th- and then when we brought it out, I did some fresh coriander that mm. I've got, spring onions and then sour cream. Served it with sour oh, cream and some great. rice. The mix of flavours was that. magical. You that know. sounds really good. But, but when it comes to what's a, a basic go-to for somebody that's never really played with squash or something, mm-hmm. because I think they're a really, they're a great family mm. vegetable that we yeah. should all dip into a lot more. I agree, and they can be used in so many different ways. I think they go really nicely with kind of warming spices, which leans into Middle Eastern cooking quite well. So your ground cumins, coriander, like you say, all those nice warming, like cinnamon, and that obviously also 
leans over to sweet dishes so they can be used for savoury and sweet it's interchangeable but I really like them roasted up with some of those spices and then tossed through a grainy salad with some feta mm. that kind of thing but like you say they're great for kids as well because they're yeah. kids love anything sweet obviously yeah, I might put some through some mac and cheese blitz half of yeah. it roast it up blitz half stir that through the mac and cheese and then leave half of it in chunks yeah. as well and it adds a lovely colour oh. it adds a bit of sweetness really gorgeous um, soup obviously yeah. is a go to yeah. they're sweet and creamy um, which we're going to be talking more about at the end oh. stay tuned um, <laughs> but yeah they are just so great like you fl- like you say they can be used in kind of Mexican dishes yeah. in a veggie chilli they're really good to bulk out with some beans and um, peppers and onions they're just so versatile aren't yeah. they and so delicious like you say my favourite way to talk to cook them is definitely to roast them yeah. or I stick them in my air fryer now big fan of the air fryer and they just become caramelised and sweet and gorgeous and you can put them with everything yeah cool air fryer mm. any good I love my air fryer. I'm such yeah. a convert, yeah. The problem is, over the years, we've bought all those different things, you know, I that know. come out. And then, you know, Mrs Frost, it's all a great idea for like 10 minutes, and then she doesn't like it out on the side. This is the thing. If you've got somewhere you can put it out of the way, it's great. And I would also say it's great for cooking smaller portions. Yeah, but if you're right. cooking for a big yeah. family, it's not as convenient. Certainly yeah. the one that I've got, which isn't very big. But if you just want to, like I say, roast some squash, yeah. which is then going into yeah, a salad yeah, yeah. with some other bits, I, I tend to use it for half a dish. So I'm instead of you. turning the oven on yeah, yeah, to roast yeah. a tray of vegetables, yeah. I'll stick those in the air fryer and then that will go yeah. into an omelette or whatever else I'm cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely yeah. a convert. I'm, cool. I don't like all these gadgets, but no. I'm on board with the air fryer. No, cool. Well, well I'll, I'll, maybe I'll try again with her. Yeah, you know, go. She tell you, we buy them, we're out for a few weeks and then they go in and then, of course, once they're not in sight, I'm a bloke, I'll forget that. You know, <laughs> so, yeah, cool. So, yeah, so squash is that absolutely brilliant. I suppose the final one really is that idea of pumpkins mm. and as I said to you pumpkins have become a big deal you see them at the end of the year I uh, Malvern they have a massive sort of show and people they come and they show their large vegetables mm. off and some of these pumpkins no word of a lie look like bean bags so I walked past this allotment once yeah. and a man was watering his yeah. feeding his pumpkin yeah. with milk he was pouring milk over yeah. it is this urban legend no, no I tell you what uh, when you start talking to this and I, I always look at upon them and they're, they're magical so when I was at this show I was doing my stuff and there was this, this big tent of just these huge vegetables yeah. and I had to go in to do a photograph thing and anyway I was watching three of them and one had a marrow that was come up nearly to your chest yeah. the other one had the longest parsnip you'd ever seen <laughs> and the other one he had his pumpkin on the floor which literally looked like a beanbag <laughs> uh, but these it looked these men they were all fellas in there but they looked happy they yeah. looked like they were with their tribe <laughs> and, but then you started talking to them and they all had these little tricks yeah. of how they grow and they would put frames over them and they would concentrate on just growing the one pumpkin and they had all these little methods yeah. of feeding it and doing right. this and doing it. And that's another magical life outside of growing a few mm. things to cook. It can become quite obsessive, yeah, you know. So, yeah, there's that. lots of tricks and bits and pieces. Pumpkins I haven't grown much over the last few years. I think they were a thing I did a lot with my my kids were younger Mm. and it was lovely for a few years I used to do four pumpkin plants Mm. four kids and then and get them engaged and and hopefully you know that's yours that's yours that's yours and then we would do the whole carving thing Mm. but growing wise I would say more or less the same process of the squashes starting them off seed in a pot but you can buy all these plants as well when I Mm. said about seed if you look at courgettes if you look at squashes and you look at pumpkins they can all buy those ready to go Mm -hmm. Um, I just wouldn't put them out until early May even going into June um, especially where I live Um, but yeah but that process is pretty much the same put some work into the soil and and away you go but yeah but if you're an average little veg garden at home you probably don't want a lot more than than one pumpkin plant because yeah. these things will they will sprawl they will do their thing so mm-hmm. if you are going to plant them you're planting these things probably just over a meter apart mm-hmm. but you grow them on you create this massive thing and like you said a lot of the pumpkin growing in the country is all aimed for the 31st of all where you see them then just sat in fields and bits mm-hmm. and pieces 
cooking it wise. Mm. I think America and pumpkin pie and mm. all that sort of thing. Pumpkin, maybe soup. Mm-hmm. Anything else? It's very similar to the squash, really. I treat it the same, but it does have those connotations of kind of Thanksgiving and American pumpkin spice mm. latte. It's become like the pumpkin season hasn't it Halloween yeah, yeah. it's more it's indicative of the season the pumpkins there's a lot you can do with it and it works really well in dessert like you say pumpkin pie yeah. we've got a really good recipe on the website for pumpkin cinnamon rolls so you use Ooh. the pumpkin puree in the dough and it makes them really soft and fluffy and then you've got like a cream cheese frosting on top which is just so good you're doing it again oh I can't help it <laughs> and there's uh, pumpkin pancakes on there as well like the thick fluffy American style pancakes yeah. that you fold pumpkin puree again into the batter and they're just that sounds delicious that with maple syrup and pecans I'll give that a go that does sound yeah you know, that, it's that really versatility mm. of savoury and sweet yeah it's it's great there's very few vegetables out there isn't there that they can translate that well obviously we've got carrot cake and courgette cake is now a thing but pumpkin the flavour of pumpkin just works so well in so many different ways it's definitely one of my favourite vegetables so I need to start growing them yeah I think when you think about it that versatility again if you haven't got much space where you can go sweet with it or you can then it takes spice really well yeah that's a cool that's a cool friend to bring to the party isn't it? and i really think that's cool. an interesting way if you're going to grow veg obviously mm. i'd always say grow what you love yeah but actually if you've got limited space it's a lovely way of joining this mm. up now thinking i'm growing this because it's versatile yeah i can make a pudding out of this i could also i can knock up a lovely savory dish and yeah. i think that's a great way of thinking about what we're going to grow look at the diversity of what it's going to bring to the table it's, mm. it's a good, I, i've never really thought about growing veg yeah like that so mm. you've just helped me do that oh that's there good go. i think the other thing with pumpkins is there so many of them go to waste and yeah. a lot of the pumpkins that are grown for carving are quite bland so yeah. people don't cook with them yeah. and i would really encourage people to if you are going to buy buy one of the carving pumpkins yeah. Don't carve it a week before Chris, uh, Christmas, before yeah. Halloween, and let it go mouldy on yeah, the doorstep. Yeah, yeah. Carve it on the day, put it out, and yeah. then take it in yeah. and yeah. and turn it into a soup. Yeah, which brings us on to yeah, I tell what you, I, I bought I, today. You're yeah. just like that was seamless, <laughs> <laughs> like a just ultimate professional. I mean, you know, making me look quite inadequate. But thank you very much. But they don't uh, expect professionalism off me anyway, so we're all right. But I'm go going on, back to the food. Oh, I know. Go on. Okay, so I've brought along with me a classic really creamy pumpkin soup and this is definitely one of my favorite ways to serve up pumpkin like i say it's a great way to avoid waste because you can add cream and you can add spice to boost the flavor if it is one of those more watery carving pumpkins don't waste it put it into a soup roast it in chunks with the skin on so you're not wasting anything roast the seeds as well make sure they don't go to waste sprinkle them on top and pumpkin soup it's just so delicious you're doing it it again I I said seriously like you make you make this I've been listening obviously I listen carefully to you because I am totally and utterly fascinated (laughs) with food but you draw these little words out so it's creamy and it's certain words you know? I can't help and it then, and I'm, me and then I'm, I know and then I'm here like a little Labrador puppy just listening going that sounds amazing that's amazing but right, let's yeah. eat the soup come let's on let's eat the soup let's go on then wow. so this is a classic pumpkin soup it's just made by roasting the pumpkin there's a few herbs in there a bit of thyme yeah. cream stock it's really simple but you could add some spices to it and then on top we've got some croutons which are just fried off in some oil and some roasted pumpkin seeds like we said dive in let me know yeah, what you think yeah that looks incredible doesn't it it does look good also again it's it's texture of it the colour of it oh it's good it's good some of the other pumpkin varieties aside from the carving pumpkins like the crown prince they have so much flavour oh, they're dense me. and sweet and they're just they're packed with flavour and that really comes through in the soup that is lovely. Makes a good lunch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, me. Uh-oh, we're making a mess. Mm. <laughs> but it's just... That feels like I've got home. 
Like a hug in a bowl. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. You know, that literally feels like I've got... Oh, God, that is amazing. Yeah, really good. I would say, people, give that a go. Mm-hmm. I think that is that is absolutely lovely. And I think, to be fair, though, that you said a nice lunch. I'd be proud to put that on a table for a, a nice sort of dinner party, really. It feels a nice quite, winter dinner party. Yeah, it, it feels it looks quite fancy. Beautiful. Christmas it dinner does. starter. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, there you go. It <laughs> might well be on the list. Well, my dear, as per normal, thank you very much. That's, that's amazing. I'm just in my little foodie, dreamy world now. <laughs> it's becoming a lovely place to go. Thank you very much. <laughs>